right, uh, so this video is to talk through radical substitution, which is one of the main items in the um, functional group alkanes, for the functional group alkanes. So radical substitution. So first we're going to write a balanced chemical equation. And we're going to just take methane, which would be quite simple initially, and just take methane. So if methane reacts with chlorine gas, a substitution reaction takes place. This is where a hydrogen is replaced, substituted, swapped with a chlorine. So you end up with CH3, a hydrogen comes off, and a chlorine goes in its place. And then can you see what the other item is going to be um, to balance the equation is HCl. Okay, so this is called a substitution reaction. Substitution reaction. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the mechanism um, of how this reaction takes place. And now remember what a mechanism is. So a mechanism shows you the steps of electron, uh, steps of the reaction. It shows the movement of electrons. Shows the movement of electrons. Yeah, and all the steps that take place. It shows the movement of electrons. Okay, now we need a little bit of information before we do the mechanism. So a little bit more information. So if you have a covalent bond, like inside a chlorine molecule, okay, so there's a covalent, that line there, that line is a covalent bond, and it's a shared pair of electrons. Chlorine has put one electron in, and the other chlorine has put another electron in. Okay, now when this bond breaks, when this bond breaks, then one electron can go back to the chlorine and one electron can go back to the other chlorine. Okay, so what I've shown here, so this is something called a curly arrow. Now a curly arrow shows the movement of a pair of electrons. So a curly arrow shows, shows the movement of a pair of electrons, of a pair of electrons, to either form or break a covalent bond, to form or break a covalent bond. And a curly arrow is written like that. But can you see, I've not actually written a, a double-headed arrow. I have drawn a single-headed arrow. So what I've drawn shows the movement actually of one electron. A single headed arrow shows the movement of one electron. So in radical substitution, just one, um, uh, just one electron moves. And when this bond breaks, when this bond breaks, you're going to end up with a chlorine atom that gets its electron back. And you're going to end up with another chlorine atom that gets its electron back. Okay, and this is called, this type of bond breaking is called homolytic fission. Homolytic fission. Bond breaking fission and homolytic means that the bond is broken and you have formed two, uh, two species that are the same. And these things with the dots, these atoms with the dots are called radicals. So the word radical means a species with an unpaired electron. So a species with an unpaired electron. Okay, so before we get on with the mechanism, we've got some key words there. Mechanism, we've used the word curly arrow, we've used the word homolytic fission, and we've used the word radical. So radical is unpaired electron, curly arrow shows the movement of a pair of electrons, and homolytic fission is the way the bond is broken. So let's have a go at this mechanism now, okay? So I'm just going to draw the, write the equation one more time because it's good to have the, we need to have the equation as our focus, have the equation as our focus, and it is um, substitution, okay, radical substitution. Right, so the mechanism, we're going to start with the first step. So the first step, is called the initiation step, okay? The first step, because it's the first step, initiation, it's called the initiation step. Okay, so this is when you've got your chlorine molecule and the and UV light makes helps this to happen. UV light 
breaks breaks that bond and forms two chlorine radicals. So let's just remember what happens there. Let's just remember that what happens, one electron go, goes back to one atom, the other electron goes back to the other atom. And remember what we said that was called homolytic fission. Okay, so that's what happens first. Okay, homolytic fission. All right, so that's the first step with UV light, high energy UV light. The second step is called the propagation step. You've got to be careful with all your spellings here. The second step is called the propagation step. All right, so this is when you have the methane. So you've got the methane and you've got a chlorine radical. Okay, now I'm going to give you a bit more information. This is for A-level chemistry, but I'm going to give you a little bit more information. Okay, so we've got the methane. I'm going to draw it out. Okay, and we've got the chlorine radical. Remember, radical means an unpaired electron. Now, remember, there's two electrons in here, a covalent bond. Now, one of the electrons goes back onto the carbon, and one of the electrons forms a bond with a chlorine. Okay, so again, it's homolytic fission, but that is what's actually happening. Our CH bond is breaking. Remember, a mechanism is, shows you the movement of electrons. Okay, so we have got, so we're going to end up with CH3, and the carbon is a radical, and we've got HCl. Okay, so that's the first propagation step. There's a second propagation step, and that's where we take the CH3 radical, still called, prop still called propagation, the CH3 radical, and uh, it reacts with another chlorine molecule. Okay, so the same idea again, let's just draw it out so we can see clearly, so you understand what is happening. Okay, we've got the chlorine bond, sorry, chlorine bond, and there's two electrons in the chlorine bond, and one of them forms with the carbon, and then one of them goes back to itself like this, yeah? Okay, so we have CH3Cl, and then we regenerate the chlorine radical, okay? It's really important to note that in these steps you have a radical making a radical. A radical makes a radical. So the equations are balanced, yeah? The equations are balanced. Another important thing to note as well is that you have a chlorine radical the chlorine radical gets used up, but in the second step, the chlorine ra radical is regenerated. So the chlorine radical is acting as a catalyst in this reaction. The chlorine radical is used up, and then the chlorine radical is regenerated. Okay, so that's another important thing to note. Um, another um, thing to note as well is that if you add up these two steps together, okay, if you add them up, if you add everything on the left and everything on the right, can you see that the chlorine radical will um, cancel out, the methyl radical will cancel out, and you are left with the overall equation. When you add up the two propagation steps, you're left with the overall equation. Okay, so that's something where you can double check double check your answer. Now the final step, which I've not drawn yet, sorry, is the termination step. Okay, and there are three termination steps. Okay, there's three. And this is where two radicals, two radicals react together. So this can be a CH3 radical reacting with another CH3 radical to not make a radical. So that makes ethane or, sorry, I've not got enough room now, um, or it could be a CH3 radical reacting with a chlorine radical. And can you see what that's going to make? That's going to make CH3Cl. Or the third termination step is you could simply have a chlorine radical reacting with another chlorine radical to make a chlorine molecule. So a termination step is when you, when two radicals react together in order to give, um, um, in order to give 
uh, a molecule yeah okay let's just try it with one more let's try it with um, something a bit more complicated how about um, hexane so if you've got hexane hexane um, and uh, let's vary it let's put bromine instead okay for a bit of variety okay and hexane and we're going to take off one of the hydrogens and replace one of the hydrogens with a bromine and therefore your other item is HBr let's go through the mechanism so we've got initiation is the first step initiation this is where you could pause the video and you could have a go at this yourself and then check your answer to make sure your answer matches so initiation with UV light with UV light is the first step then the propagation step propagation step is when you have the uh, hexane the alkane plus the bromine radical and then that will give you the um, carbon radical when we've taken the hydrogen off and HBr and the second the second uh, propagation step is with reacting with a bromine molecule and that gives you the final halo alkane and it regenerates the uh, catalyst yeah and then the termination step termination remember there are three possible termination steps so you have um, the two uh, carbon radicals reacting together so I'll give you an enormous molecule C12 H20 whoops 26 you could have the C6 H13 reacting with a bromine radical and that will give you the halo alkane um, or you could simply have the two bromine radicals reacting with each other like that okay so the chances of them asking you methane very small chance they're going to ask you something more com uh, complicated so well, what's the problems with this uh, mechanism so there are some problems so for example let's look at the problems with this mechanism with this reaction okay so if you have like the example we've just had now and you are it's called mono substitution it's called mono substitution that's where you're substituting just one um, hydrogen. Um, how can you control that? It may not just substitute one hydrogen, okay? You might get multiple substitution. So that's a problem, okay? You might get multiple substitution. Can you control the reaction substitution? Can you control the reaction where there is only one substitution? So if you have something like hexane, um, and you think, oh, I'm just going to substitute one bromine. Um, but actually, you might get a substitution there, and you might get a substitution there, and you will get multiple, you could get multiple substitution. So that's one of the problems. So you get a mixture of products. Yes, yeah, so you get a mixture of products. Um, another um, uh uh, issue or for, or for example here's another example so like on our first example when you had methane on our first example um, you could potentially carry on substituting in our first example until there are no more until there are no more hydrogens left so you could carry on ch2cl2 go to chcl3 until there were no more um, no more hydrogens left um, so you get a mixture of products another problem is um, you'll get uh, with the mixture is that you'll form some isomers okay so if you had uh, a molecule uh, an alkane like this for example okay do you know what this alkane is called well the main chain has got one two three four five carbons so that's pentane in the main chain and then on carbon three there's a methyl group uh, one two three there's three methyl three methyl pentane okay now if you reacted this with bromine or chlorine then you could get a bromine here that'd be one potential isomer yeah or or you could get a bromine there substitution there that's two potential isomers or 
you could get a bromine here, three potential isomers, or you could get a bromine there, four potential isomers. Um, can you see that if you have a bromine here, then that is the same as this bromine there. So that's because of, because of symmetry in the molecule. So you could get four potential isomers. Yes, you have multiple substitution, and even on the mono substitution, you can get um, a mixture of isomers. Okay, thank you.